Okay, I'm going to start by mixing my lye solution and my oils. I'm using my bucket because it's a slightly bigger batch than usual. It's just like an extra bar than I normally use my slab mould for these soaps, but I'm using my long log moulds today. So I'm just going to stick around this. Okay, so what I want to do is pour off two jugs so I can use these colours. And I've got a uh, jade green and this one is cappuccino and these are both from Micah Mama again. Slightly different colours to last year. Not too different, but slightly different. So let's just pour those off. Now this soap... I think this fragrance accelerates slightly, so I've got to be careful. So let's get the colours in and mixed as much as we can before I give them a little stick blend. I'm going to just make some videos because I didn't really manage to get many done this week, so I thought, oh well, you know, let's. Uh, think realistically about this and YouTube I enjoy doing my YouTube I like interacting with you all it's starting to um, help me out financially just slightly you know not massively but it is slightly which is great it just helps towards bills uh, you know for my rent and things like that so it's if it can do that it's fantastic so you got to sort of think about what's worth doing you know and I'd rather help the business make its money than have to talk to people <laughs> about plastic containers and things like that it gets very very frustrating some days because it's just people just love to come and chat to you they have no intention of buying a thing but they want to come and bother you in your shop you know it's just just the way people are, especially on a Friday afternoon and especially summer holiday time when the parents usually want a bit of light relief from having to look after their kids. Like, I ain't here for you for that, okay? Okay, so I'm going to put some fragrance in here. Uh, yeah. And then start pouring these soaps. So, I'm using my log molds. So I need to act fast. So where's my spoon? Just pop them there so that I'm ready to go, you know, I don't know. Just make sure that's cleaned out there. It's got a little bit of soap in it. From the other batch. Okay. So I'm going to leave my base. You can't really see me do this, but I'm going to leave my base um, uncovered. So it's not going to accelerate and go crazy on me too much, you know. I think I might do the same with this one like I did with the other one. I'm doing in the pot swirl because no matter how you do a swirl, sometimes an in the pot is just as good as a chopstick, you know. So we're doing in the pot with this one to see how we do. I'm soaping relatively cool, so it's probably why this is staying nice and fluid at the moment. So I'm just going to pour my colours into my pot, swish them around a bit, save a little bit for the tops, and away we go. So this is a very light trace at the moment. So let's get it in. Bit of a boring looking soap. I'm not really into soaps that look like this, but I just have to be careful with this fragrance because like I said, it accelerates. And I don't want to be having a mishap on a Friday afternoon like I normally do. <laughs> well, not normally, but it's just some days I have bad soaping days and it can, ugh, just stresses me out. So, nearly yeah, same. Sometimes the colours end up looking a lot nicer um, 
when the soap's cut the next day, they can sometimes look a lot more vibrant than they do right now because this looks like a horrible murky mess, but it might actually turn out okay. But I do think it discolours slightly anyway, so it's never going to be the prettiest soap because of that. I do, like somebody was saying, oh, you know, goals, I want to be like you, I want to shop, and I'm thinking, do you really? If you've got a successful mail order business, unless you've got somebody to run a separate shop from you, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> because it can be really, oh, it can drive you mad some days. It just, you know, and I've always run my mail order and I've always been so happy with this business. But since I opened a shop, it, my sister always says, you're the worst shopkeeper. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I just don't enjoy it as much as just running my mail order business, you know, because I like my own space. You know what I'm like for podcasts. So, uh, yeah. I'm a chatty person, you know, when customers come in and I'm always so grateful for a customer. I really am. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying, like, I'm just explaining what it can be like sometimes. So don't ever feel like, I want to shop and I want this and I want that, because sometimes you get what you wish for <laughs> and um, it doesn't always go to plan, you know? And it isn't always what you think it's going to be. It really, really isn't. Like, running a shop and a mail order service at the same time is actually quite difficult. Especially with stock levels and the time that it takes to serve people and chat with them and accommodate them takes all of that time away from your mail order. So unless you want somebody with you that you've got to pay wages for, really, really think about it before you decide to actually go for it and open up a shop because it is, let me tell you, it can be stressful. Matt said to me before I actually opened, he said, is that really what you want? And I was like, I don't know. You know, I don't know if it is what I want, but there's people at my door because I'm in a place where shops are. So it makes sense to be a shop rather than just try and make out that I'm not a shop, you know, and I'm a workshop because it's disappointing for people to see it like that. But, on the flip side, like I said, there's always other stuff that you don't think about before you open up a shop. And it's just, it's stressful. I'm just going to be completely, utterly honest. It's very, very stressful. It's just the way it is, you know. Anyway, I've got a bit of soap on my wrist, so I'm just going to clean that off. And then we'll come back, texture that top a bit, and I've got some little red apples to add to the top. Okay, let's get this top done. So I'm just going to flip it over a little bit like that. It doesn't have to be... I'm not going to say it again because I say it on every video. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Okay. Now, i got my little red apples here. Little red apples I made, ooh, it's over a week ago now. So I'm gonna stick them on the side and hope, 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 hope that we're all right with those. And these are just made with red, I think I use reef red clay, Australian reef red clay, and a Bordeaux mica, I think is what I used. I've got it written down, but I can't remember off the top of me yet, but I think that's what I did. So what's everybody doing this weekend? Let me know in your comments what you've all got planned. Are you picking fruit at the moment? There's like, around here, we've got lots and lots of orchards because we are a market gardening town which I've mentioned several times and there are so many orchards now that aren't um, tended to anymore so a lot of the time you can just go and pick things <laughs> and nobody minds because they're not being worked you know so there's always like tons of fruit trees around this area well not always but there are lots of fruit trees around this area so at the moment we've got apples i ate my first one straight off the tree yesterday those were cox's orange pippins so i had an apple and 
I mean, there's been tons of blackberries, but I went to pick some the other day and I ended up meeting a friend that I've met through dog walking. Um, there's a really funny girl called Tracy. She's a uh, Northern Irish lady and she just does me in stitches. She's really, really nice and she's a dog walker for a living. So I met her and we were chatting away and I'd taken a container to go and pick blackberries. But we were talking for so long that I did. I just ended up with no time to go and do it, so <laughs> I didn't get any. But I've been buying blackberries. Can you believe this? Buying blackberries. I must be crazy. But I've been buying like well, a mixed fruits thing. So when I get back from the gym in the mornings, I like to have my uh, protein smoothie, and I have a plant-based protein. I use a, a pea protein by a company called Tropica, which um, I got introduced to by watching Sarah's day on YouTube she uses Tropica products and she's got her own Tropica products so I've been using pea protein which I really like it's like a vanilla pea protein because I don't like whey so in the mornings I go and have protein pancakes with this protein powder and then I like to put some frozen berries into the microwave heat them up for a minute and then pour them onto my protein pancakes with a bit of maple syrup and it is just Gorgeous, lovely, lovely, lovely flavour. So, I've been buying blackberries, but now is the time I need to pick them. So I just need to make some time. That's what I'm getting at, I need to make time. So anyway, <laughs> here is Jim Nightshade. I will take pictures so you can see him, because he's beautiful. He looks better now that he's got uh, his apples on him. Jim Nightshade, if you don't know, if you don't know, like Peter Martin says, if you don't know, what you don't know is a lat. If you don't know, Jim Nightshade is a character from the movie Something Wicked This Way Comes and that's what this is named after. So this is an apple pie, an all-round American apple pie scent with little red apples. So there you go. I will be back to cut this one tomorrow and I'll leave these pics at the end just so you can take a peek at that and then we'll do pictures at the end of the whole thing. Okay, ta-ta! Good morning! It's time to cut Jim Nightshade. So we're going to have a look at him and see what he came out like. So Jim Nightshade, as I said, I think I said, is a character in Something Wicked This Way Comes. And he's one of the two boys that get uh, caught up in the dark carnival. Mr. Dark's Carnival is what it's called. Pandemonium Carnival. <laughs> Get your words out. I'm just having my coffee. So yeah, I've made a soap and a whip soap and everything else in a scent called Dark Carnival. In fact, it's to the side of me because I just made some whip soap yesterday. I'm just waiting to put my labels on. I just printed. So my Dark Carnival whip soap looks like this in the jar. So I pipe it in. And I'll just open it so you can see. But it's just like it doesn't come out clearly. It's just like a whip soap that you can use. I've talked about doing a video on this, I might do, but it won't be like a recipe sharing video, it'll just be showing you how I make it. Um, but you can use Crystal OPC to make your own if you want to. But yeah, this one is Dark Carnival, so it's got like a nice tonka bean and caramel and honeycomb. It's like the smell of a carnival, it's just beautiful. So I made that yesterday because I sold out. It's like this time of the year, it's one of the scents that I bought out, I think, for one of the autumn series and then I ended up leaving it as a general catalogue because people loved it so much. So it's, it's been, it's been part of the range for quite a long time now. So I have to keep making it. So it's like consistently sells, but in the autumn, Everyone's like, oh yeah, Dark Carnival, I'll have some more of that. It's very nice. So this is Jim Nightshade, and this one is like a beautiful apple pie scent. With like hints of raisins and fruits and spice. This is a really nice autumnal blend. Autumnal, autumnal has been the word of the month here on this channel. So, in my previous video, I tell you, we went out last night to this ramp in a town that's only like five miles away from Evesham. So we went to a place called Pershaw and they've got a good skate ramp there, like a little skate park. So 
Matt and his friend Gaz went to skateboard and I went along. Anyway, when we came back, we were hungry and our, our plan was to go and get fish and chips. How British is that? Go and get fish and chips over in Pershaw after Matt had finished skateboarding. So that was the plan. And then when we got in the car, just having my coffee. When we got in the car, we decided actually, now this is ridiculous, this story, but we decided that we'd go to the KFC, right? So I was like, okay. We just, yesterday, a new KFC opened in our hometown. We have not had a KFC in our hometown ever. And so it's been like this in joke for people of this town that we always wanted a KFC and somebody was going to set up a service to go and um, fetch it from the town over and set up a business. <laughs> bringing people KFC a bit like a delivery service and things like that like that exist today but anyway it never came off but last night or yesterday the new KFC opened so <laughs> Matt and I decided oh let's go and have a look so we get back about half past nine last night got up to the KFC and you've never seen anything like it people were like they'd been possessed it was ridiculous. I've never seen so many people. At first we drove up and it looked like there were, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe like three cars in the drive through And then when we got closer, let me just show you this soap. It's a bit boring, but it's it's an all right soap. Not, it doesn't look that great, but it's all right. Anyway, when we got closer, the drive through must have been 20 cars deep. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. There were people outside eating, there were balloons everywhere. There, it was like, oh my God, everyone's gone chicken mad. So, <laughs> so we turned the car around. I said, I'm not that desperate for chicken. I can just go and get some fish and chips from town. So we turned the car around and then loads of other people were coming in. Like it was just continuous and, or well, continual, continuous, continual. <laughs> and I'm thinking the managers of that shop inside there are gonna be absolutely knackered because it must have been from early morning till like when they shut last night that the place was just rammed i mean there's a lot more people in this town now than there ever was like everywhere totally overpopulated but um yes it was hilarious there were just so many people getting their chicken fix so we turned around and we came back down into town and went to the fish and chip shop, one of my favourites. There's like this uh, Greek family that run this fish and chip shop and it's they're so good, oh my god. They're so good because it's just like spotlessly clean and the food's really good, it's like give you loads, it's really nice. Anyway, I get there and I tell them about the KFC and I said we've just been up to the KFC. And I was saying how bad it was and how busy it was and this guy was just like, what is it with people in Evesham and the KFC? I said, hey, you don't understand. I said, people have been waiting for this moment. <laughs> people have been waiting for this moment, like, all their lives, honest to God. Like, when we were kids, the KFC was like one of our, like, oh my God, it was like the biggest treat. If we were in a city or something like that, you could go and get a KFC. And my dad used to be obsessed like with even like with the little lemon sachets that you get to clean your hands afterwards it was just like the takeaway that everybody wanted so that's why there's been this in joke in Evesham it's just like we need a KFC <laughs> and then we got one and yeah all hell broke loose <laughs> so I said we'll leave it for a bit you know I'm not desperate for that chicken I can make my own chicken <laughs> it was just hilarious I was like look at the people look at the people it was really, really funny. And this guy at the chippy, he says, I had a lady in earlier and she uh, had queued in the KFC for 45 minutes and then got so frustrated that she gave up and went down to the chip shop. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious that people go that crazy for, oh my God, oh my God, the chicken, the chicken. <laughs> then we cut some more. <laughs> So yeah, it was a very funny experience really, and even funnier getting into the chippy and uh, listening to this guy going on. He said, we cook chicken, we cook fried chicken. I was like, I know you do, but I don't want chicken now, I want fish and chips. <laughs> kind of just put me off, I thought, oh my God. And then I thought about the sewerage system. <laughs> the local sewerage system today ain't going to be very nice. <laughs> what a thing to talk about. But it's the things that go through your mind, you know? 
This is what you think about. <laughs> That's what I think about. This has come out a bit weird. It's like wonky on the bottom. I'm gonna have to play those off. That's odd, I don't know why that's happened. Hmm. Strange. So I still haven't seen, uh, seen the last Stranger Things. I've got that to do. I'll probably do that later. If Matt has a sleep this afternoon, I think. <laughs> Give me the remote. Give me the remote. He's always the remote king, you know? He's always the one with the remote control at home. And we have to watch history programmes and gold programmes and time team digging programmes and skateboard programmes. And sometimes I think I just want Netflix, which is why my four o'clock Netflix fix is the best part of my day because I can watch what I want. And if he falls asleep, see the trick is feed your husband so much food that he falls asleep and then you can have the remote control. It works every time, especially on a Saturday night when he's really tired. So wear them out on a Saturday and then feed them until they're going to pop and then they'll just fall asleep and you can have the remote control. And on that note, I'm at the last soap. So I'm going to tidy up, clean up, put my stuff away, ready for Monday more. No, not Monday, Tuesday because it's bank holiday this weekend. So I'll be back some point in the near future with more videos I'll try and do some more this week because I can put them up or schedule them for when I'm away and then I won't have to think about it if I do that so I have got some more soaps to make well when have I not got soaps to make it's it's always you know there's never a time when I don't need to make some soap not really I have a list as long as my arm so I'm gonna tidy up all this junk and I will see you, see you, see you, see you very, very soon after this with more. I might even film some bits of where we are staying on holiday so you can see where I'm at. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Not to make you all jealous or anything. You know the influencers who do videos of their brand trips and I think, oh, look at it. Look at it. The only one I like watching is War Beauty Christy because she's so appreciative of everything still. <laughs> She's not right up her own arcs, is she? Like the rest. Anyway, see you later.